Alright, so what we're making is a hidden teapot. You'll see two examples up here of just regular teapots. We need to scoop out. Um, you'll have the freedom of making this in any way you'd like. You can make it out of coils, slab, throne, uh, pinch pot, sculpture, anything you'd like, as long as it's to the size, the scale that's in your Tom's notebooks. Okay, so this one's got a lid, handle on the lid, handle on the back to pour, and you'll want to make your lid to make sure that it doesn't fall, like this one, if I were to tilt it too far, the lid would fall off. And the spout, and the spout will go over in just a minute to make sure that you put it in the right spot, because they get a lot that aren't uh, acknowledging the function of a teapot. This one is another example, this one has a lid that is glazed on, and they didn't put a handle on here, they said that the back was the handle, um, not really going to slide, so keep that in mind. So those are a couple examples, and I'll show you just basic ideas. You don't need to follow these exactly. I just want to give you some ideas of how to build the body or the structure of the teapot. So this is just one example. I put it over a hump mold, it's just a slab. And then I would put it on the potter's wheel because the potter's wheel will continuously move. On the banding wheel, I'm just giving you the example. But it will stop moving, and if you're trying to cut a straight line and it stops, it's really hard to get back to that straight line. So I put this on the potter's wheel centered. Just like when you trim, just kind of move it over until it is in the middle. Then I would take the modeling tool, carve a nice straight line over here, get a nice circle, cut that in as much of a half as you can. So I like to use the ruler, and I usually just take the ruler at one point, Start the edge, I'm just making an indention, and I go across the middle point, all the way across, make a line, then I'll cut that line. I'll cut the line with the modeling tool all the way across. Then I have my two halves. So then I'll move this. I'll take those two halves, I've let them set up quite a bit, I blow dried them a bit. So here's one example of a body. Then just like any other project, I would put that on top, just like the slab mug, just like the slab base, set it on top of a slab. Then I would carve around that trace the bottom, score and slip those together. Now say you scored and slipped up here and it just doesn't match exactly right, you can always add a little coil in there to make it uh, blend or smash it together and then blend it with your fingers. So that's the basics of one style of body. I've got another one over here and it's not quite, it is dry enough now. So I just took this square mold, just to give you an idea of different things. Took the square mold, laid the slab on there, cut the middle out, then I can use these two to create the body like this. Okay, then I'd score and slip these together, blend them, then I'd make two bottoms for this, put a spout, a handle, and a lid on it. Make sense? Okay. Put those back. So they're still setting up a little bit. This one here was made from two of these, two of this exact mold. So if you didn't want to cut this in half, you could just make two of these and stick them together. You just go and slip them together to make that little square. All right, now into function. Your spout, you can make any way you'd like. I've got two examples here. So this one is coil, roll coils out, put it together, make sure it's blended, don't leave them like little donuts. Just make it look nice regardless of what you do with it. So those are coils and then slightly blended. And you put the spout somewhere down here and this one's shooting straight out so I would make it longer and come up a bit. And then this one's thrown and this is the one I'm gonna use for the example. So I threw this on the wheel, bent it a little bit and then I cut it at an angle. So you'll see that angle right there. So this was the bottom, it was flat, and I cut it with a cutting wire. So that way it'll be angled up. So when you put your spout, you wanna put it, put the base of it kinda of low, and the top should be somewhere near the, the top of your teapot. And the reason for that is um, primarily I'm primarily concerned with having the top as tall as the, the teapot. So if my spout was down here, if I put water in, I could only fill it to that level. But if I put it up here, then I could fill it all the way to the top. And it doesn't need to be taller than the teapot, because that doesn't make any sense. But anywhere in here. <laughs> then I would score and slip that on and blend it like no other. 
and your lid, you can either make a separate lid or you can cut a lid out as long as there's a handle on it. And then you'd make a handle and you can make the handle any way you'd like, whether it's a sculpture. Last year I had a few students make a, like a dolphin or a little ocean theme thing. Um, this was a wave. So just kind of be thinking about what creative things you can do to camouflage the fact that it's a teapot. It should be a hidden teapot, not just a basic body like this. This is a nice teapot, teapot excuse me, but it is just teapots, not hidden, okay? This is something new we're trying.